Howdy, this is Lemmy with Revzilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to install heated items on your motorcycle. You should be looking into electrically heated stuff for your motorcycle if you want to ride your bike when it's cold out, but you don't want to be cold on your bike. There's all sorts of things we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to talk about heated grips, heated seats, and even heated items of clothing. Now, some items are really bike specific. Take a look at this Mustang heated touring seat. This is something that's really only going to fit a late model Harley touring bike. There's other things though that are much more universal in nature, like heated clothing and to a lesser degree, heated grips. Be sure to use the bike finder at revzilla.com and we'll show you the stuff that fits your bike for the bike specific items. Now, when it comes to installation, almost all of these items, believe it or not, install very simply electrically. So I'm gonna say the electrical end of the installation for most of you should be a one beard on our BSD, our beard scale of difficulty. It really is very simple to hook these items up electrically. Now, I'd be fibbing to you if I told you that was the only part of the job. With many of these parts, there's also a mechanical end to the installation too. For instance, hooking up a set of heated grips requires usually the removal of some bike parts. The same goes for a seat. You're gonna have to do some mechanical installation as well. So that part of things can push into the two beard category. But I would say that just about all of you with a decent set of hand tools and a can-do attitude should be able to do a decent job right there in your own home garage. Alrighty, now moving back to application for just a moment. It should be said that just about any of the electrical items you're gonna see up here and some of the ones you won't will hook up to just about any motorcycle. As to whether or not that's a good idea though, remains really up to you, the user, to figure out. Some bikes produce a bunch of electrical power. This street glide makes enough juice to power a small city. But there are other bikes that don't make so much excess electrical capacity. I'm thinking specifically of bikes like the Honda Rebel or the Suzuki SV or DL650s. These bikes have charging systems that just don't make a lot of extra juice. The formula is really simple. Power produced minus the power consumed by your motorcycle is the energy you have left over to heat your buns on a really cold day. Now, if you wanna get into the ins and outs of exactly how to tailor the heated items that you wanna to run to your bike and make sure everything will run safely, I wrote a common tread article that accompanies this video that'll give you the ins and outs and all the details of the things you need to know to safely run heated gear on your bike. Now, there's probably some of you out there who aren't looking to get your electrical engineering degree. You just wanted to watch a video on the internet and not be cold anymore. And there's an easy solution for you folks too. Cruise on over to Powerlet's website. They're a partner of ours. Their website is really easy to use. You can look up your bike and they have a very simple, easy to understand star system. Figure out what your bike's charging system will support, put it on your bike. It's that simple. We're gonna get started right now with the actual electrical and wrenching portion of things. First up is this heated seat. So the fact that we have a Harley Touring bike up here is not accidental. There are a huge amount of heated seats made for Harley Touring bikes. In fact, I'd say there's probably more heated seats for a Harley Tour than there is just about any other bike on the market. Fortunately, putting one onto a Harley Touring bike is cake. I'm gonna show you the job right now. Now you can see here, I've got the seat off of our bike. You need to take the seat off of yours, obviously, in order to swap them. If you don't know how to do that, we have an awesome video on swapping out seats on a Harley. So if you're unfamiliar with the process, check that video out too. But really, this is very simple. From the installation of the seat to the actual electrical work you're gonna be doing, very, very minimal. This is a very high reward, low work type of a situation. So let's get this seat over here. Now, once we flip this baby over, just about every heated seat you're gonna see for a Harley touring bike is going to obviously have wiring on it. And most of them are going to have this connector on here. This is called a Deutsch plug. It's a four pin connector. And this is how we're gonna get power into the seat so you can keep your keister warm when you're cruising outside when it's real cold out. Now, fortunately, Harley is thought to put a corresponding plug inside their motorcycle. So once you have your seat off, if you go rooting around a little bit, you'll find a connector that'll look a little bit something like this. It'll have this rubber plug on here. You need to pull this plug off. And in order to make sure you've got the right plug accessed here, just count the pins in there. If you look, you'll see four pins in there. It's not coincidental there's four pins in this as well. Once I clip these together, when you hear that click, it means this is in here, it's locked in. This seat is actually now electrically all wired. It's ready to rock and roll. From here on out, all you need to do is mechanically reinstall this seat. As I had mentioned earlier, if you're not 100% clear on how to do that, we also have a how to install your seat video. Check it out real quick. Now there's some of you that are saying, well, that's really great, Lemmy, but I don't have a Harley touring bike. And for you guys, we haven't left you out in the cold. Let's get this seat out of the way here. 
Now, ultimately, if you have a different type of bike, for instance, a BMW R1200 GS, this is a bike that also has some heated seat options, you may be facing a slightly different install because you're not gonna have that Deutsch plug connector in your bike like the Harley Touring bikes do. For those of you who are looking at something like, again, one of those other heated seats for another type of bike, or perhaps you're checking out something like this, a heated seat pad, uh, this is meant to be installed universally into just about any bike, you're gonna have something that really boils down to just two wires like you can see here. So this is gonna hold true for just about all heated gear because all heated gear really is, is a controlled short almost every single installation. Whether you're talking about heated gear, or you're talking about a heated seat, or perhaps you're talking about installing some heated grips in your bike, everything's gonna boil down to this two wire installation. So regardless of what you're installing to keep yourself warm during the winter, it really is gonna be very basic and what we're doing here should be analogous to your situation. If you're looking to run heated gear, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you exactly exactly how to do that. Those of you who are looking into installing some heated grips, electrically speaking, the wiring for this is exactly the same as it is for the other items that we're gonna be installing. The only thing that's different for you folks is gonna be your mechanical install of your grips. If that's something you don't feel 100% comfortable doing, check out our video we have on grips installation. So the first step we're gonna to need to get to in order to start this process is actually accessing the battery. So I'm gonna put this rubber plug back into that port we just disturbed. And after that's done, I'm gonna gain access to the battery. Now this is gonna be different bike to bike to bike. There's gonna be obviously all different ways to get at your battery. Some of you guys with sport bikes, you may find that your battery is actually under your fuel tank. Some of you with older uh, Japanese bikes, typically the battery sits underneath a side cover. Um, regardless of what it is that you're wrenching on, know that you're gonna to have to have good clear access to your battery. And on some bikes, that can be a little bit cumbersome. So as you can see here, I'm gonna remove a couple items. I'm gonna get these bolts out of the way. And that's gonna allow me to do a couple of things. I need to unclip this connector here, pull this ECU carefully, of course. We're gonna get that out of the way. Just put that safely off to the side. And from here, I can pull this plastic tray out. And as you can see now, I have good clear access to the battery, which is really the point all of you need to be at. So from here, what I'm going to do is install an SAE lead. And I'm doing this actually to power some heated clothing. So there's a couple items we wanna talk about before we get right into things. The first is that you may already have an SAE lead on your bike. However, you may wind up not using it. And the reason is actually pretty simple. All SAE leads are not created equally. Some of them are designed for low amperage devices, like say a float charger. Instead, because we're gonna run high draw items like heated gear, we need to have an SAE lead that is specifically designed to carry the higher loads that heated gear can draw from a battery. So make sure that you've got the right piece on your bike, you've already got something on there. If you're in doubt, replace it with the correct one. Now the reason we're using an SAE lead Personally, I like to get power into my bike as well as out of it. If you have an SAE lead attached to your motorcycle, you can use the same power port for hooking up your battery tender during the winter months, and you can also use it to get power out of your bike for heated gear or for perhaps too, even if you're using an item like this nifty thing. You can actually, believe it or not, turn your SAE power port into a USB charger. It can be great when you're on the road if you're trying to charge up your phone, your GPS, perhaps a tablet, something like that. So we're gonna start the installation here, but there's also something else to remember too, um, and not just safety here, but also keep in mind the way we're doing this can be done different ways. Now I'm gonna wire directly to the battery. This is good for a lot of motorcycles, especially you guys on CAN bus bikes, bikes that have some sort of an electronic monitor. They, your bike knows what's going on if you have a CAN bus system, electrically speaking, and it might not love it if you tap into a fuse. However, you can do that on other motorcycles. Keep in mind though, this is gonna give us direct power into and out of the battery. If you're worried you might leave your heated gear on or perhaps forget from time to time to turn things off, you may wanna consider instead ignition switched power. But because that's not very universal and varies wide wildly from bike to bike, we're not gonna cover that, but it is a valid way to get the job done. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is start unhooking the battery so I can get my SAE lead in place. And I'm gonna begin by unhooking the negative battery terminal. The order you do this in is important, not really so much because you're gonna do anything terrible, but most bikes use the negative terminal to ground, and they ground through the frame of the motorcycle. So getting that bolt out of the way first will prevent you from possibly shorting anything if you should happen to make contact between the positive lead of the battery and the frame. So negative lead comes off first. I'm gonna unscrew then my positive side, as you can see here, and get that puppy out of the way. 
And as you can see, I now have good access to this. So what I'm gonna do is hook up my lead. Now, better SAE leads are gonna be color coded in some way. You're gonna see either a red and black, red being positive and black being negative, or perhaps they may even have a plus and a minus molded into the ends of the connector. If you happen to stumble across some SAE lead that does not have, again, those color-coded connectors like you can see on here, you can actually use the business end of the SAE lead to determine what should be hooked up where. If you take the end of this off here, you'll notice there are, again, two wires here. The shielded end is your positive side. So all you have to do is look at which wire runs to the, to the shielded side of things, and that's gonna be your positive wire, or again, uh, the equivalent of your red wire, as you can see right here. So let's hook these up. I'm gonna start with the positive side. Now it's important to hook the positive side up first, again, going back to that shorting issue. Remember, your negative cable always comes off first, but back on last. So I'm gonna thread my bolt through the ring terminal here, get that star washer in place, and then I'm just gonna use my fingers and tighten this very loosely in place. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna wanna move these wires a little bit to route them in just a moment so they don't chafe or rub or possibly get cut by any moving or hot melting, melty parts of the motorcycle. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here, knowing full well that, again, I am gonna be hooking things up so I have to be mindful of actually shorting anything out here. I'm gonna thread my bolt through my ring terminal and just screw that loosely by hand into the top of the terminal. Electrically, we're about all set here. So one of the things that's important to do is to now take your nifty new terminal and we need to really figure out a good place for this puppy to live. So what I'm gonna do is actually route this down through the frame and you can see I've actually already got a zip tie set up over here. So I'm gonna run this through over here and then I'm gonna use that zip tie to snug this puppy down. And I'm keeping this out of the way of two things. Firstly, I don't want the connector to be damaged by any moving or hot parts of the motorcycle. I'm gonna zip, clip this zip right here. And the second reason I'm doing it, again, is so that it's not in my way. It doesn't become any type of a safety hazard. The last thing you want is a wire flopping around when you're actually on the road moving around at speed. Now, we're not quite done here. I'm gonna tighten up this wiring just a little bit, just as far as making sure it's in a nice snug spot. And then once I get that handled, I'm just gonna rotate these ring terminals out to where I want them. So again, they're not in the way of anything. And from here, I can actually snug these down. So I'm gonna put a tool on here, get these snugged up and into place. So now we can take power from this motorcycle or we can put power into the bike. Again, you could hook your float charger up to this, but more importantly, for those of you who are watching this, you can actually start hooking up items of heated gear. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, wait a minute, my connector doesn't look anything like that. My jacket won't plug into an SAE plug. And that's 100% correct. This is where adapters come into play. So let me show you a couple of the ones we have up here. A lot of the heated gear you're gonna see out there, if you're running a set of, say, uh, heated jacket line, or heated pants, any type of heated insoles for your feet, um, gloves, they're typically gonna use a connector that looks like this one. This is called a coax connector. Um, it's very easy to hook these puppies up. Anything that you see that's a female coax connector like this is actually giving power. You can see on the other end of this is that SAE lead. We hook this up and we can now plug in any item of heated clothing. So again, going back to our friends at Powerlet, they offer a different connector style. They actually offer a Powerlet specific connector. So if you should happen to have Powerlet brand stuff, again, you can adapt out with that SAE uh, adapter that we've installed in your bike to now the Powerlet connection point. Makes it unbelievably convenient in order to run heated stuff. Again, right off just that single terminal that you now have providing power via the SAE port. Keep that in mind. So there are some of you too who may say, well, wait a minute, I've got a lot of stuff stacked onto my battery. There's stuff everywhere. I got my, my lights and I got my, um, my fuel controller and I've got all these other things stacked on there. You don't wanna have a giant stack of ring terminals. Aside from being a little messy in terms of wiring, it can be difficult to actually stack all those items up to get a bolt through there. But the really big issue, I think, is that you have what is now a fire hazard. With all those bolts and ring terminals stacking up, it becomes very easy to possibly short something. For folks like you, I'd recommend something like the fuse block you can see over there. Just a very basic fuse block provides you a little bit of breathing room. It doesn't leave everything up to the battery um, in terms of providing the power. You can have one neat line out to somewhere else and have sort of almost like a sub panel for those of you who are familiar with home wiring, controlling some of the accessories you want to install electrically onto your motorcycle. So as you can see, prepping your bike for heated gear or heated items of any flavor really is pretty simple. Whether you're considering, again, adding a seat heater or perhaps you're thinking about some heated grips, your process electrically is gonna look very similar to what I just did here.
Now for those of you who are needing a little help with your mechanical install too, keep in mind we've got some other videos you might want to check out. We have a great grips installation video which covers the mechanical end of putting grips on your motorcycle. We also have lots and lots of heated gear videos too which might help you choose exactly which items are going to make your wintry ride probably its very best. Now at this stage of the game, if you want to do a little bit more reading, head on over to Common Tread. I wrote an in-depth analysis where we really get down into the nitty-gritty of motorcycle electrics. From there, you leave me a comment if you have any questions, you need any installation help. Remember to subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you want some help from a live person right this very moment, give us a ring. 877-792-9455, or you can always get a Gear Geek by email. CS at RevZilla.com. I'm Lemmy. I'm out of here.